right there. He said, I know, I know my son, for who, who shall also become a people? Manasseh. Manasseh is the oldest. He said, but he also should become a people. Now let's keep reading. He also shall become a people, and he shall also be great. But surely his younger brother shall be But great. surely his younger brother, who's the younger brother? Ephraim. Ephraim. Now watch what he said about Ephraim. But surely his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. His seed shall become a multitude of nations. Anybody here read Hebrew that can speak Hebrew? When you go to look that up, when it say his seed shall become a multitude of nations, you know what it's saying. It says, ha mila goyim in Hebrew. Ha mila goyim in Hebrew means fullness of the Gentiles. Ephraim is the fullness of the Gentiles. If you don't believe me, go to any of the words right there we just called out. Uh, a multitude of nations. And why do you get what seems to if you get right what I just said? Anybody got that strong? Yeah, I got it. When you go look up nation, guess what word it's going to give you? Goa, a goyim. Okay. It's going to give you Gentile. Ephraim is the fullness of the Gentile. That's why Matthew 15 and 24, what did Hamashiach say? He said, I'm only sent to who? I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So you miss a whole lot reading the English. That's why we, we deal with the Hebrew in here. Because I know when most people read this. They just read that saying, uh, and Ephraim shall be a multitude of nations. And that just sounds simple in the English. Our ancestors don't speak, uh, didn't speak English. What was it saying in their nation, in their language? Who shall be called, uh, he just called Ephraim Gentiles. But you don't know that reading in English. The Egypt language, how old? About 400 some years old? Close to 500? We're talking about the people of antiquity. In their language, he said Ephraim shall be what? The fullness of the Gentile, they were going to become known as Gentile power. They will be scattered and sold amongst the Gentile nation when he come find them. Anybody got strong? I dare you to look up any of them words. I said, go ahead. So I looked up Goatee, which was um, Goatee, which was under nation, and it's strong zero one four seven one, and it says it comes from a foreign nation, hence Gentile. Stop. We say it comes from what? A foreign nation? Foreign nation. Hint, Gentiles. Gentile, mm -hmm. Gentile heathen, nation, people. What happened to the house of Israel when they were getting rid of the bill of divorce? Did not, uh, um, were not they called what? Uh, strangers of the covenant by the house of Judah? They were called foreigners. Remember, they, had, they were not his people anymore. How do we know that? When we go back to Hosea, when he said, name the other child, Lord me. What does Lord me mean? Not my people. He said, you're not going to be my people anymore. But what did he name the other child? La Ruhama, which means what? No mercy. I'm not going to have mercy on you. You're not going to be my people anymore. And Jezreel, I'm going to scatter you or sow you amongst the nation. But guess what happened when we keep reading Hosea? He said, and again, he shall have what? Mercy upon who? The house of Israel. So that's why when we get to Peter and we get to Apostle Shaul, when he's speaking to who? The quote unquote Romans or Gentiles, guess what he say to them? As it was spoken by the prophet who? Hosea. As it was spoken by the prophet Hosea. If Hosea was talking about these people back then, who do you think Peter um, and um, Apostle Shaul would be talking to? The Romans would not have known about the prophet Hosea. No outside nation would not have known about them. You would have had to have the Hebraic scrolls and the writings of the prophets to know about them. And when we open up Romans, did he say it was spoken by who? Elijah or Elijah? That's why they keep all referring back to the prophets. And if we go back to those verses that you start out reading, the very same verse, one of the verses that when you start out reading, verse 8 and verse 9 comes from Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter, the 4th verse. Psalm 69, the 22nd verse to the 23rd verse. They keep going back to the writings of our forefathers because they're speaking to the people who descend from our forefathers. This is why these answers were written or spoken by the prophet Hosea. This is why. He called his sons who would be later on in time, they would be Gentiles because of their wickedness all day long. This is 
why he said, I'm only sent to the house of um, the low sheep of the house of Israel. Why was he only sent to the low sheep of the house of Israel? They had fell away. They had fallen fall away. And Mashiach had to reunite or bring the two sticks back together to make them one. But the only way he could do that, how, what had to happen so he could do that? He had to die. Because, matter of fact, we'll get Romans on um, 9 and 7. Because this, this confuses a lot of people right here. Now, now do y'all see the importance of me doing this lesson? And y'all know it took everything for me to do this lesson. I did not want to do this. You, you got something? Okay, so I can't go get uh, Romans 9. 7. I mean, Romans 7, Romans, uh, 7 right? You want Romans 9 and 7? Or Romans, Romans 9, 7? verse 1, what does it say? Romans 9, verse 1. Say the truth in Mashiach, Allah, not. My conscience also bears me witness in the Ruach that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. Uh, it's Romans 7 that one, right? Okay, you no, you want to go down and forth. Okay, keep going there. Okay. Okay, so um, for I wish that myself were cursed from a Mashiach, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. Who pertaineth the what? The adoption. Who, who's being adopted here? Who, who's being adopted here? He said, my brothers, what? According to the according flesh. To the flesh. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are what? Israelites. Israelite. To whom pertain to what? The adoption. The adoption. Who's being adopted? One of the one of the kingdom. Kingdom. Don't you hear a lot of people say these the other day said we're being adopted into the royal um, priesthood? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. He's telling you who's being adopted. Israel, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. With to whom pertain to what? The adoption. The adoption and the glory and the Covenants. And the what? Covenants. The covenants. And the giving of. And the giving of the law. Yep. Of the services of what? And the services of Elohim and the promises. And the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Yahusha came. Stop who, right there. Okay. Now go to Romans 7. All of this stuff we read about it pertaining to Israel. My brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. What does it mean to be my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh? It's a bloodline or lineage. Now let's go to Romans 7. We're going to see the importance of why he said I come to what? The lost sheep of house Israel. Let's go and pay very close attention to this. Go ahead, up. Romans 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Stop right there. Know ye not what? Brethren. Brethren. I speak to them that know the law. Which law is he talking about right here? Is he talking about Roman in, uh, legislation? Torah. Or is he talking about Torah? He's talking about the Torah, our law, his brethren, Israelite law. Go ahead. How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband. The woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband. So as long as he liveth. So as long as he liveth. Key word that what's the operative word right there? Liveth. Go ahead. But if the each or husband be dead. If the husband be dead. She is loose from the law. She's loose from the law, or in other words, she's no longer bound to the law. Of her husband. Of her husband. But now you're fixing to explain what it means to be bound or loose from her husband, what the law is talking about. So then, if while her husband liveth, if while her husband liveth, while this man, her Esau, her husband liveth, she be married to another man. She be married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress. She shall be called what? An adulteress. What was the house of Israel called? Adulteress. Was not the house of Israel called an adulteress? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
But if her husband be dead, but if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. She is free from that law. Did y'all hear that? If her husband be dead, she's free from that law. That what? He read. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. And when her husband dead, she's not an adulteress if she go marry again. As long as her husband is dead, she's no longer bound to the law. She's free to marry, and she's no longer an adulteress. Go ahead. This is key right here. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. Wherefore, my brethren, ye have become dead to the law. Keep going. By the body of Hamashiach. By the body of Hamashiach. That ye should be married to another. That ye should be married to another. Now watch this. Even to whom who is raised from the dead. Even to whom is what? Raised, Raised from, from the, the dead. dead. That we should bring forth fruit unto Elohim. That we should bring forth fruit to Elohim. Now let's go back and look at some. When we go back to Jeremiah 3 and 16 and uh, to 18, when we go back to Hosea the second chapter, what happened to the house of Israel? They received a bill of divorce. So that Mashiach, while he was living, could they return under the covenant? No. Because remember, she had become a harlot. She had many husbands. So if she returned back to him, what happens? It's an abomination. Did not the law say that? So what had to happen in order for the house of Israel to return back to Hamashiach. He had to die. And not only did it say, you're free to marry when your husband died. It said, what did it say that last verse you read? Even him who was? Him that's raised from the dead. Even him who's raised from the dead. You can return back to your husband, the one who wrote you the bill of divorce or put you away in the first place. Because he was fulfilled the obligations of the law. The law said the husband had to die. This is why Hamashiach said, I'm only sent to the law sheep of the house of Israel. He never divorced the house of Judah. It was only the house of Israel, and it was his blood that freed them up to be able to return back under, uh, to the covenant. The husband had to die. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, first of all, this is just so much common sense. But now, so, killing 50-something years of Christian church, uh, what ended up happening is that he never did, he did not come for the house of Judah. Because the Jew, Judah were never, I mean, we know Judah committed sin, mm -hmm. but he was never divorced. Judah, right? Judah was put away, but never divorced. But he was never really put away. No, you got sent in. Yeah, you do got sent in a punishment. Yeah, but that's how he put her away. Because remember how you know he put her away? Because she no longer could reside after in that land after that. And remember he said something to that woman at the well? He said, that's gonna come a time. Neither will what? Uh they worship in Jerusalem, nor will they worship in Samaria. Because he knew their demise because of their wickedness. So he, when you said he put her put the two away. He just said, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm leaving you. He didn't divorce him. Yeah, he sent her out. You, but then I don't want to deal with you anymore. Yeah, so he sent her out of, out of his out, house. Out of his house. Oh. What was his house? It was uh, Jerusalem. It was Jerusalem, the land he placed his name upon. Mm -hmm. He placed his, palm, um, his name upon the land and the people. That's why you got Yaru Shalom, or Yaru Shalom, or you got Yashra Allah, and you got what? Yahuda. You got the Father's name on the land and his people. He put Judah away by putting her out of the land, and he sent the house, he divorced the house of Israel or Ephraim and scattered and sold them into captivity. 
That's why he told the woman at the well, neither will you worship here in Samaria, nor will they worship in Jerusalem anymore. They both were going to be carried into exile. And this is why even when the woman that who dog was vexed with the demon, did she not cry out after her she out? And the disciples said, go, make her go away, for she cried out after thee. And he turned, he said, he, he said what? He said, it's not me to take the bread which belongs to the children and give it to the dogs. For I am only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not going to take my meat, my bread, and give what belongs to my children and cast it to the dogs. Why did he call or refer to that woman and call her a dog? That's the whole picture of the whole book. Because everybody concerned about the other nation. When he called her a dog and did what he did after he called her a dog, it lets you know what, what takes place with the nation. He called her a dog, but what was her response? Even the dog, what? Eat the crumb which falls from the master's table. And so when he saw her faith, what did he do? He had mercy upon her. So now when you see the children of Israel go into Canaan land before they go into the land, Joshua and who else escaped out the land? Caleb. Caleb. Caleb followed Joshua. He was his right hand man. Joshua was what? An Israelite. Caleb was a stranger. He was not an Israelite. He was adopted and given to the house of Judah. So what's the, what's the Hebrew word for Caleb? Dog. Other being of Caleb. The word dog in Hebrew is Caleb. Did not Caleb or the dog receive a blessing for attaching himself to who? Israel. You can't get around it. You, you, you can't get around it. The whole, but the whole book is about Israel. That's why it's called the Hebrew Scriptures. It's called the Torah, or the instruction. Who were the instructions given to? And what were the instru instructions? These instructions were a marriage contubal or a marriage contract between Yahusha and his bride or his people, the 12 tribes of Israel. You'll find it strange when we get to Revelation when it talks about the new Jerusalem coming down. It says it's going to be surrounded with four walls and in each wall three gates, which makes four walls, three gates, make twelve gates, and inscribed in each gate is the, are the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. And when the angel was given, the Malachi was given the measure rod to measure the inner courts, it came out to what? 144,000 what? Cubits? How many are supposed to stand on Mount Zion with him? 144,000 men. Does it mean that the women and children are excluded? No. The men are always the leader, just like when he fed the what? The multitude with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. It said he fed how many thousand? Five thousand. But did it also say what? Not including the women and the children. He was counting the head. They were fed. They were covered. It's the same thing. So the Torah was given to who? The two houses. The two houses are what? The two fish. What are the five loaves? The Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, and Deuteronomy. And the Torah is called what? What? The Word. What happened to Nibirim? Did not he make a contract with Israel? So when you go back to Deuteronomy, read the first chapter and the first verse, it says, and these are the what? The words. Somebody can do the one and one for me. The first, uh, one second. 